Omar, what sectors did you approach to input into our low carbon investment report? We spoke primarily to four interested sectors. Um, firstly, the electric power sector. Secondly, the energy intensive manufacturing. Uh, third was the property and commercial buildings group. And then finally, we spoke to several members of the financial sector who are interested in investing in this space. What did you ask those different sectors? Um, the questions essentially fell into two camps. One set around what were the barriers to investment or what might be holding us back right now. And secondly, their perspectives on what was required in order to unblock the way and allow us to move forward in, a, in as quick a way as possible. And was there a consensus about what's blocking the investment? Overall, on the high-level findings, there was a great deal uh, of consensus. Um, essentially, and this won't surprise you, people are looking for predictability and stability of policy, uh, a recognition within government of the time frames of some of the investment commitments being made relative to the policy making and the potential changes in the policy. Obviously, on some specifics or details in uh, individual policies, there would be a divergence of opinion depending on where people are coming from. And what did they feel the government can do to help with this? Essentially, the recommendations fall into several groups, some around setting uh, more clarity around the long-term vision for the low-carbon environment, and some to do with very specific near-term policies that the governments can influence. But what it all boils down to is how can the government help de-risk the investment phase to allow us to begin a serious transition into a lower-carbon infrastructure. Are they optimistic it's going to happen? I think the honest view of those, for example, in the power sector today is that the UK is not on track to meet its 202020 obligations. Um, we could be getting onto track, but a lot needs to be done. Um, but it's primarily around this whole topic of how can we further de-risk the investments in areas that are legitimate where the government can contribute, for example, in planning or in green financing.